Welcome to the Habitual Woman Podcast with yours truly, Debrina Wright. I'm a holistic, habit-based lifestyle coach, nutrition educator, and fitness trainer. This is a show about transforming habits into a lifestyle. We will introduce and reintroduce habits, as well as have a conversation with women about the habits and the rituals they use to live the life that they deserve. Now let's get into today's show. Welcome to episode one of the Habitual Woman podcast. Beat the stress, many ways to reduce and manage stress in the midst of COVID-19. Now here's the thing, stress can be so damn sneaky, especially right now in the midst of the coronavirus. Sometimes you don't even know that you're feeling it until you turn your head and your neck hurts, or maybe you feel a constant pit in your stomach, or you notice your heart is beating faster than normal. The truth is, some stress is normal. But chronic stress, like what's been happening right now with everything going on, can do a real number on your body. Believe me, I know. It can wreak havoc on your hormones, causing weight gain, and especially that unwanted, unhealthy belly fat. Also, it can take a major toll on your health, paving the way for illness and disease. Scientists are learning more all the time about how stress can impact your health. It's never been a big secret that stress causes illness. But until recently, it has been very clear how it plays a role. So in regards to stress and inflammation, now more than ever, it seems pretty clear that chronic psychological stress can affect your body's ability to regulate its inflammatory response. This is because one of your body's key stress hormones, cortisol, is a key player having a role in controlling inflammation. As you may likely know, inflammation is associated with practically every disease process affecting our bodies. That's why I wanted to discuss this. I wanted to give you a little something to equip you with the tools you need to reduce your stress levels and improve your quality of health while we deal with this horrible pandemic. Episode one, beat the stress, body of the podcast. So now let's just jump into it. So here's a way you can take back control. Over time, having too many stress hormones in your system is linked with increased inflammation and all of the problems associated with it. So what can you do about it? Well, most of us have never learned how to use the powers within our own bodies to cope with stress. In fact, many of us was taught to just walk it off or just ignore it, hoping that it would just magically go away. Pushing through it is often the absolute fucking worst thing you can do to get through a tough period. Why? It can keep your stress hormones elevated. If you're not careful, feeling stress can become your new normal. The good news is you can take back control by learning some easy techniques that will calm your body, ease your mind, and lift your spirit. This podcast outlines many techniques and tips to help you feel less stress. So I hope this helps you lower your stress levels and find more balance in your life. So let's talk about some stress antidotes, like breathing away stress. Your breath is an incredibly powerful tool to combat stress. It's so important that it's worth taking several short breathing breaks a day. Why? Because deep breathing helps to reset your nervous system, the system that controls functions like heartbeat, blood pressure, swallowing, etc., into a calmer space. It only takes four to five minutes to feel more relaxed and less stressed. I've included three techniques to help you get started with your breathing practices. One, for deep breathing one for relaxation, and another for energy. I'm going to start off with belly breathing. This is shallow breathing and stress that goes together like PB and J. Retraining your body to take deeper breaths will help you feel more relaxed, and it can even help you strengthen your deep core muscles. Hello, abs. All right, make time for belly breathing sessions every week. You can do this lying down or while seated. Now, keep in mind, this one can make you feel a little sleepy, a little sleepy. See, I'm already feeling it until you get used to it. So if you choose to recline and be prepared to take a nap, kind of like me at the end of a yoga session. So here's the steps. Sit comfortably in a chair, knees bent, and your shoulders, head, and neck relaxed. Place one hand on your belly just below your rib cage and the other on your upper chest. Breathe in slowly through your nose, feeling your stomach move out against your hand. The hand against your chest should move. Next, draw your stomach in 
as you exhale through your mouth. Again, the hand on your upper chest should remain still. I want you to repeat this for three to five minutes. Next, I want to go over box breathing. This calming technique has been used for everyone from Navy SEALs and first responders to nurses and teachers. You can tell by the people that I'm mentioning that this really works. It involves controlling both parts of your breath, breathing in and out, as well as holding your breath. It's called box breathing because you do it in part of the breath for an equal amount of times, four counts, as if you were breathing around the sides of a square. To start, sit up straight in a chair, feet flat on the floor. Next, slowly exhale through your mouth as much air as possible you can for a total of four counts. Now hold your breath for four counts. Then gently and slowly breathe in through your nose for four counts. And then hold your breath again for four counts. For a full session of box breathing, you simply repeat the cycle for a total of, you guessed it, four times. The third one, energetic breathing. This powerful breath technique was popularized by daredevil adventurer and breathwork guru, Wim Hof. It will simultaneously leave you feeling energized and relaxed. It also might make you feel a little lightheaded or tingly when you do it, which Hoff says is normal. So here's his basic technique. Sit comfortably and take 30 quick, deep breaths like you're blowing up a balloon, but in reverse, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. You go ahead and do it. You're not going to hear me sound like that. Next, I want you to take slow, deep breath in and then exhale, holding until you need to breathe in. Inhale again as deep as you can and hold it for 10 seconds. And then repeat this as many times as you like. Again, you should feel relaxed and energized after doing this. All right, so let's shift. I want to talk about how to heal your body. Why? Because a healthy body is a resilient body, which means you're better able to ward off the negative effects of stress. So we'll do this by getting regular exercise, which boosts your feel-good hormones in your immune system. Eating a healthy, whole foods diet will help you keep your blood sugar levels more stable, which is critical so stress hormones can wreak havoc on them. Also, be sure to get seven to eight hours of sleep each night to help your body recover and restore for the upcoming day. A quick tip, set a timer on your phone at regular intervals to get up and move around especially if you're in a sedentary environment, especially with this work at home, school at home way of living. This helps to work off excess energy during the day. So how you can take care of your body, go for a walk during lunch or when you have a moment. So studies show that being in nature has a common effect on your mind. Go outside, get some fresh air, enjoy some quiet time. Do this at some point during the day. Stay clear. Avoid numbing out. And what that means is using alcohol or drugs or food um, or compulsive behaviors. This also causes more stress in the long run. So if you can avoid the whole numbing out thing, that would be uh, really helpful. Move. In addition to regular exercise, try relaxing movements like Tai Chi, again, walking, meditation, yoga, stretching, just All of these can help to combat stress. And honestly, it makes you feel a lot better. It gets some circulation going, which again, increases your energy and relaxes you. Another thing, unplug. I know this day and age is really hard, which is why it makes it even that much more important. Make time every day to be away from technology at some point. Turn off your phone, power down your laptop, go into another room, again, go outdoors, but please enjoy some type of downtime. So now let's talk about calming your mind. Over time, stress can become such a habit that it starts to feel normal. We don't want this. How do you know stress has become a way of life? 
Listen to the voice in your head and be aware of what it's telling you. Is it repeating stressful thoughts or phrases throughout the day? That's a huge clue. Every once in a while, do a quick body scan. Is your jaw clenched? Are your shoulders tight? Are you holding your breath? Which of these things are you doing right now? I need you to relax. You often feel full of dread, sadness, or anger and wonder why no one else is getting with you or getting with your program. That's a sign of stress. If these sound familiar, it's time to start making some mindset shifts. So how can you rediscover your focus? Find your why. Having a larger purpose in your life can help you put stress in perspective. You might find that you have more than one why, which you usually do. It can be your family, your health, and some other goals. How about positive self-talk? Turn negative thoughts into positive ones. Instead of thinking today is the worst, blah, 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 how about looking at the brighter side of things? I'm never going to get anything done, is what you tell yourself. Change it to, I can handle this if I take it one step at a time. You have to give yourself pep talks. You have to. If no one loves you, you need to love you. Another thing, organize your time. Learn to manage it more effectively. Try not to overcommit. Quit being the yes person. Break down big problems into smaller parts. Take one step at a time instead of trying to tackle everything at once. Chunk it up and make it digestible. Make it bearable. Make it doable. You will feel so much better after it's all said and done. I promise you. And then lastly, let's soothe your soul. Taking care of your spirit means taking care of the things that are in your own best interest. It involves setting clear boundaries, both for yourself and others, and making time for the people you love. Playing with your dog, hugging a loved one, or the simple act of helping someone will all help you reduce your stress levels. Keep a positive attitude, but also accept there, there are things that are beyond your control. You can't control everything and let that shit go. Surround yourself with things that lift you up. Say no to things that you know that will create stress. Point blank, period. So how can you keep that positive vibes only? Create a practice. So set a regular positivity practice. Read uplifting books, pray, meditate, watch inspirational videos, listen to inspirational podcasts, and do this on a daily basis. Have fun. Make time for habits. Habits. Hobbies, interests, and relaxation. We have the time to do that now. You'll come away feeling so much better, recharged, and ready to tackle any nagging problems. Friends and family, seek out social support and respect to what's going on today. There's many ways to be able to do that, but spend enough time with those that you enjoy. You can still connect. Now it makes it a little bit easier because now I can FaceTime someone and not have to commit to actually going over, but still give that connection and still give that energy and give that love. And it was a lot less work. Didn't have to get dressed, didn't have to go anywhere and all of that good stuff. We can get cute in our PJs with a glass of wine or tea and just have us a good time. Another way, tune out. Dream some good chill music. There's great playlists out there. Create a playlist with some of your favorite jams. Listen to an inspirational podcast again. Let this give you a mental time out when you're dealing with road rage mm -hmm, or any other stressful events. Man, it's all about being a vibe, right? So how about less stress and more life? I hope this podcast helps you better navigate our new normal as of today. As your coach, I'm all about eating real food, moving your body, and living your best life through habits and rituals. As a thank you for listening to today's podcast, I created the Corona Stress Management Guide. I wanted to give you a little something special to help you take the next steps on your wellness and fitness journey. So you can go to the show notes to download or go to the habitualwomanpodcast.com. That's where it all lives. I would consider it an honor to be part of your healthy lifestyle team. Make it a fabulous day. Your habitual coach. Thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Habitual Woman Podcast. Please take a moment if you enjoyed the show 
to share with your family and friends, and please leave a review. To learn more about the podcast and our community, you can go to the Habitual Woman Podcast.com. And until next time, this is Debrina Wright, your habitual coach, transforming habits into a lifestyle. <laughs>